Hey everybody, Manchester Music, Jeff Manchester here. Welcome to another Let's Play video. This time I'm playing with London Contemporary Orchestra Strings from Spitfire. Um, definitely a welcome change um, from the last couple of uh, gorgeous, but in tone very sort of, um, well, not overly exciting and thrilling in the same way that this is. I'd say the tone for this library is almost improvisational. You don't really know where these articula articulations are going to go. And that's really exciting when you put your you know your fingers down on the keys and you're just like what's going to happen? I have no idea where this is going. And then the articulations ebb and flow, and it's anyway, it's really cool. So I'm going to shut up. But first, uh, before I do, this is a let's play video. If you've been on my channel before, you know how I do things. I actually write a demo song. I think that's the best way to explore a library. I see a lot of people on YouTube just playing one or two notes. You know, in five minutes, you know, they basically just read you the manual and they're done. I've met a couple of people from these sample libraries, and I know the work they put in to creating these products for people. And it'd be like a car company working on something for like a year, and then some dope on YouTube, you know, reviews it, uh, quote unquote, and uh, you know, points to the tires and goes, "Those are the tires." And then presses the button. This is the button you press if you want to start the car. And if I press this button, the windshield wipers go back and forth. Anyway, thanks a lot. That was my review. It's like, dude, take it for a test drive. You know what I mean? Like. Take it for a drive. That's what I'm trying to do on the channel is to take these libraries and really create something because you'd be writing a song, you know, with these guys. You wouldn't just be getting them and then hitting a few keys and then calling it a day. You'd be writing a song. So I'm trying to put these reviews, not really reviews, but overviews in a song context. So with that, I'm going to shut up. And here's my little demo featuring mostly LCO, a couple of little special guests, but mostly LCO. Anyway, enjoy. <laughs> There you go, a little little number for Easter, a little holiday number. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, let's go one by one here. I'm going to talk about what's on these tracks, why I used it, how I mix them, blah, blah, blah. Let's start with uh, the pianos. Yes, these are not from London uh, Contemporary Orchestra Strings. These are from Native Instruments, Una Corda. Just, just gorgeous. I've talked about them on the channel before. I'm going to turn this compressor off here. So this is the felt, basic felt. Um, snapshot patch thing just comes in the sustain pedals off because it didn't catch the sustain because it was all the way over here but basically isn't that gorgeous we just hear the the pedal rumble the strings hitting the fabric anyway panned right up the middle okay 12 o'clock I have another set of unicorda two sets actually same thing 
and I've doubled them, pan them left and right, hard left and hard right. If you're going to double anything, in other words, if you're going to take it and just, you know, put it onto another track, it'll go up by usually about 6 dB, so you want to be careful and turn things down. It's going to double in amplitude, so anyway, even if we're going to pan them left and right in the stereography, we have to make sure that we account for the the doubling in amplitude, so that's why I've done what I've done. That's why they're so quiet. They're really loud together, right? If they sound like they've got a kind of reverse effect on them, that's because they do. I've chosen this here, this reverse setting. If I were to disable it, actually, I've got this one. Instead, oh, I'm still new to logic. There we go. So when I apply the reverse effect, you know, eighth notes. I could go dotted, whatever. It just has a nice tone to it. And um, I should mention that on the above unicorda piano, um, I've just decided to do a little bit of coloration on the piano itself. So if I pull this back, it almost sounds kind of washed out, which I don't like. So I've put the color knob forward, and that gives it a sort of sinewy tone. Oop. We get more of the pluckiness and more of the attacks. I'll demonstrate here more. See what I mean? So the, the release is relaxed a little bit. And now we hear more of the attack when we go to the right. There's also a little bit of uh, volume automation here. Um, these did not need to be volume automated because, you know, they don't go anywhere after, I guess, bar, what is that, bar 40. But uh, this piano kept bringing it, so I just sort of lowered it to make way for these bizarre swelling violins, which we'll get to in a minute. So that's that, okay? Hitting A, by the way, in Logic will reveal the uh, the automation lanes. Okay, let's keep going. So our first introduction into uh, the LCO, which is the twitchy violins I've named here. If I go in, I'm using the trem sol pont, which is the articulation at the furthest right here. Gorgeous sounding to my ears. And this is just about ten o'clock here on the pan pot, pan potentiometer. Playing with the dynamics and the vibrato. This is key. If you have faders or use your pitch and mod wheel or whatever, you have to bring these string sample libraries to life with um, these two here, if you're using Spitfire anyway. This is what you want. Um, otherwise, it sounds like you're conducting cadavers, which is, I think, what Christian Henson or whatever his name is of Spitfire said in one of his tutorials, and I couldn't agree more. So you want to write your notes in, and then you want to do some automation, which I can show you down here. This is what it looks like. So down there, that's probably dynamics. This is probably vibrato. You have to bring these things to life. Otherwise, it's going to be a dusty, stuffy mock-up. So that just adds to the sense of foreboding. I mean, this is what LCO is all about. It's, 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 uh, it's a welcome change from the, the old crop of string libra libraries from these guys because it, it just has an unpredictability about it. You don't know where it's going to go. You put your hands on the keys and you're just like where is this going like what's going to happen next you know it might crescendo it might sort of peter out it might just you know shout at you and growl at you and i've added a couple of those articulations in my uh, demo too and that's what i really like about it it's unconventional and uh, this is i think where string sample libraries are headed in fact i have another review coming up pretty soon on the channel where i'm going to be talking about another library which i've been beta testing for a while I'm super excited about it, but I can't talk too much about it. So um, let's go to this next thing, which is spectral strings. If I bring this in, again, we're, we're seeing the vibrato and the dynamics move up and down. This is the same thing, Tremsol Pont. I just have another instance of it panned right up the middle on the pan pot here. There's a reason for that. If you're going to open a song with something, it should be panned up the center. It's disorienting and maybe con confusing and possibly, oops, I'll just turn that off. Possibly off-putting if you are 
opening a song with an instrument that is panned hard right or hard left or something. It just, it's disorienting. Um, the best thing to do if you're going to open a song and you want to make some creative choices like, you know, high pass or low pass or do something like that, don't ever put something all the way on the left channel or the right channel. It's just weird, and it might make, you know, people skip to the next song or something like that. So that's why that's panned all the way up the center. Anyway, um, we're missing some MIDI here. So anyway, but that's that's the violins. Trem sol pont a little lower in, in in the octave here compared to the other twitchy violins. And watch the automation here. I want to point out something to you. The dynamics dip right around here, and that's because the pianos come in, and I want to sort of set the stage for them and welcome them in the track. So the violins bow out a touch to make way for the piano. Anyway, let's go to Tension Violins, the next violin from LCO. Uh, will this be a different articulation? I think it will. Yeah, open, irregular trim, which is right here. And this sounds super cool. Did I catch the... Oh, I'm still soloing that. So again, it's tremolo, but it's, as the patch says, irregular. It comes in and out. It's almost like you're flipping a switch from something very stable to something very unstable in the tremolo. And always an octave apart. I think I've got C's an octave apart. Yeah, right there. I'm not saying do this. I'm just saying that's what I have here. Again, vibrato dynamics automation. Just gorgeous. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You have a lot of <laughs> the same thing going on, but it's we want to create an atmosphere, you know? I mean, I, if I took any one of these guys out, I'm sure I'd miss them, you know? So that's, that's all I want to say about that. It's panned a little bit past uh, noon. I'd say 1, 1.30 or something like that on the pan potentiometer. Next up, LCO Swelling Violins. Now we're getting into... Um, some familiar territory for Spitfire people with string libraries. This is going to be very familiar. I mean, big open sound here. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, flatando patch in chamber strings. So vivid long, that's the patch we have here. And again, Dynamics Vibrato, I got them ready. And then I sort of push them up, and we can see down here. I could have written some better MIDI there, but whatever. And so this is following the cello, which I'll get to in a minute, but I might as well play it for you. Just listen to how these chords follow one another. I think I might have just copied and pasted the MIDI and then maybe done a couple tweaks in the automation, but have a listen. Oh, did I catch the MIDI? I don't think I did. There we go. So you see they're sort of dovetailing. Anyway, uh, I had a reverb on there and then I turned it off. So that's that. Panned a little bit, as I said, to one o'clock. Next up, tension violins. Actually, these are violas or vi I think they're viol. I think they're violas. Let's see. On solo that. Yeah, violas. Much richer sound. And this is, again, this is one of those cool patches. Again, Trem Sol Pont. Check out how this sounds. I think this is so freaking cool. So they're sort of creeping up. 
And through automation, as you can see down here, I'm doing the same automation on both, panning hard left and right. They're just getting more and more in your face, an almost horror show. Watch these guys here. And then they just drop off. So this is what LCO is all about. This is what I mean by the unpredictability. It's about, you know, what's going to happen here. Um, and that's what I really like about this uh, this library uh, compared to other Spitfire libraries, which, who, which I love. Don't get me wrong. But um, anyway, um, is anything happening on this track? <laughs> LCO tension violence again. I don't think anything is. Why do I have this open? No idea. Let's just ignore it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Next, LCO racing strings. I have some verb. Okay. Kind of wet. Um, I have a church preset on. I did a bit of tweaks to it, but it sounds great. And I, I, these are a little dry for my taste. Uh, what I mean by these, I'm talking about these. They're not racing. That's what I just called them to make sense in my brain. Slack crescendo. Okay. And we have two sort of octaves here to play with. And these are just, these are performance uh, based articulations. Have a listen. I think it sounds it sound like racing cars, so that's why I call them racing. So if I didn't put reverb on that, it would sound like this. To me, that's just not enough. And I have a lot of reverb here to simulate the sort of room amount, and it's still not really doing it for me. So I had to go in and turn that on. We get it again later. I'll show you my panning automation. So we're all the way left there. And then for the next bit over here, we're crossing the axis. So we're sort of coming around to like, you know, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. They have another one coming up. And this is just like, just a, like almost like a, a quick punch in the face. You're like, oh, it's just, it just adds a bit of, it adds something. I don't know. I'm going to unsolo it here. So again, it's just all about tension, right? Just all about sort of making you feel uncomfortable. And there's another one right before we get into the big section here. Right there. Anyway, so I really like that. Another classic example of what makes this library a little bit different. So next up is Cello Roaring Growl. I have reverb on that too, it would appear. And this is short slackened. So let's have a listen to this. This just sort of ends the track. And this is like a big slap in the face. And again, we've got reverb on there. If I didn't have reverb, it would sound something like this. And that might sound cool um, in a different context, but for me, I just needed some verb on there. Anyway, so. Again, um, I don't know the level of talent involved in these players when they're doing these things. It's awesome, uh, and I'm really happy that uh, Spitfire was able to sort of capture it. So next up is the cello melody, which is really the driving force once the levee breaks and we go full tilt. A couple of little metaphors there. And I'm actually doing some processing here. Surprise, surprise. I'm using Neutron. And... Um, yeah, I just found there were some sort of resonant boomy peaks going on. So there, one of them is being controlled by a dynamic EQ module. For those of you who don't know how Neutron works, I encourage you to visit my little review of it on my channel. I think it's Let's Plug Neutron. So So I'm compressing it to light compression, really. A little bit of exciter work. But the main star here is the equalizer. Now if I bypassed the equalizer, or sorry, the entire plugin, it would sound like this.
They're not bad, but I just find that this adds a bit of definition to things. Off. On. Off. On. Off. Anyway, so it's subtle, but I mean, this is a bass instrument. These are cellos, right? And so bass really welcomes um, compression. So that's why I chose to do that. Uh, and these are panned right at the middle. Now, what I really like about this patch from LCO, uh, this is again in the bass, bass is a celli, this is twitchy. It's almost like we're playing a friggin' bagpipe. Like, it's, I could have gone with just open, or vivid long, rather. It would have sounded like this. I could have done a better job at writing in the MIDI, but whatever. Um, that's all very fine, but this is where it gets different with LCO. So, you know, I go to Twitchy and we go from what I just played you to this. This just has so much more character. You know, it's almost like they're trying to play the strings before they melt, you know what I mean? So they're just, uh, anyway, I don't know. It's awesome. Next up is Harp Swarm, and this is from Spitfire. Surprise, surprise, big Spitfire day here. Um, and I have that, yeah, right here. These were recently, I think they're actually still on sale. Maybe they're not as a bundle, but um, here we go. So here comes the Swarm. I've got the mic up to close here, and the dynamics are moving around, right? So that's like 10 or 12 people playing the harp all at once, the same notes. And this just sort of sprinkles a little bit of like, ooh, intrigue, right? Right about, right before we hit the big moment. Play it from here. I just think it sounds gorgeous. Um, I was talking to Keegan DeWitt, uh, who I interviewed on the, the last episode of the podcast, and he was <laughs> he had some things to say about Swarm. But um, I am finding it to be very enjoyable, although I will have to say that I'm not a big fan of the release system. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, I don't like how the release just friggin' drops off, and I have, you have to compensate with it by adding a little bit of um, uh, reverb. Because otherwise, let me show you what I mean. So you know about attack, decay, sustain, release? You know, decay and release. Decay is the time it takes for the sound to uh, attenuate such that you don't hear it anymore. And if I'm playing this here, am I on the right? No, I'm on the right thing. Oh, I am. So if I have my hand on the key here, I don't like how quickly that releases. In other words, I don't like how quickly it decays, is what I should have said. Now if I crank up the release all the way, it's a little bit better. But I almost want to push this fader even further. And I want to increase the, the sort of release time, and I can't really do that. And I guess I could compensate by increasing the release as far as I can go. Maybe turning this back a bit, and maybe it'll wash it out a bit more, so I'm, I'm changing the uh, the mic position. But even then, I don't want to do that because I want to be playing with, you know, I want to get really close for the sound. Anyway, it's just a little personal thing. Um, I still think it's a, a gorgeous instrument. So, um, And the last but not least, and that's panned a little bit sort of left here. So, you know, I don't know, 930 or something. You guys know I can't tell time. Um, last is not a harp swarm, it's just, um, it's a rise from Native Instruments Rise and Hit. And this is just to sort of like, just wake people up right before. And this is, comes from, um, this is a secret weapon, guys. 
this is Into the Void, and this is the Disappearing Bells patch right there, right there. And if I solo it, you can hear what's going on. I've timed the, I've timed these two things, these two elements, the uh, the big growl from the cello and the rise to sort of coincide with one another and work together. And I'm realizing I should just extend this MIDI a little bit so that it doesn't, because uh, I think when I play the demo for you, it just kind of, it choked at the end. So have a listen. So here we go. Get rid of the cycle. So I'm just playing, I'm just soloing these two things. So they sort of complement each other and give a kind of like, I don't know, tag team feel to the very end of this track, which I, I like. Anyway, hopefully that gives you at least an introduction to LCO and maybe you want to pick it up. Maybe you don't. I don't know. It's on sale. I think it'll be on sale for another little bit. Maybe it's not on sale anymore. I don't know. It's one in the morning and I'm drinking scotch, so I don't believe anything I say, especially anything from the last... 30 minutes. Anyway, Manchester Music, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, it's like robotically programmed into me to say that. But anyway, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you want me to cover something else, just leave a comment. I read all the comments obsessively. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.